climate change. It is everywhere. California, Florida, Puerto Rico, Pakistan. These images are a warning light that has been flashing red for decades. And now we are running out of time. We have seven years, seven years to act. That is not a lot of time to turn things around, to cut global greenhouse gas emissions in half and to avoid catastrophe, potentially irreversible catastrophe and worldwide destruction. It is daunting to think about turning it around and it is complicated, but the message is we can do this. We have no other choice. I was reminded of this when I met with a group of fossil fuel engineers at a conference a few months ago. They were rank and file engineers, not C-suite executives. They entered the profession to do top-notch engineering work, not to deliberately contribute to a climate crisis. But when our discussion turned to a fossil fuel free future, a young man spoke up. He said, do you know how incredibly difficult this is? Do you know what you are asking us to do? It is unreasonable and it's impossible. These engineers didn't need convincing that this was what we had to do. They just didn't believe it was doable. I'm going to tell you today, this is doable. I told the engineers, I tell people every day, we can do this, it is doable. And how? Many, many things have to happen, but one area that I want to focus on is where we can make the biggest difference. Did you know that just 100 global companies, 100 companies are responsible for nearly 80% of the global industrial greenhouse gas emission? 80%, 100 companies, that's manageable. These are companies in oil and gas, transportation, electric power, and food. And moving them, and many of them are starting to move, is critical to our success. If we can get the world's largest companies and their investors to act, we can reverse climate pollution, and we can build a sustainable future. We can turn things around in seven years. We can cut greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, cutting them in half. Um, and we can make progress. The timetable scientists say is needed to avoid more catastrophic climate change is within our reach. We can do it by 2030. And in so doing, we can strengthen, not hurt the economy. And we can ensure and must ensure that this is done in a just and an inclusive transition so that workers and frontline communities do not suffer as much as they've been asked to do. Hundreds of Fortune 500 companies that we work with, companies like Mars, like Nike, like Apple, understand the current reality and have already started to act. They must act. Just imagine you're a beverage company whose facilities can no longer get 100% of the water that they need every single day. Or you're a clothing company, and think about what happens when your cotton supplies are disappearing, whether it's due to drought or due to heat. It doesn't matter, they're disappearing. Or you're a logistics company that is struggling with melting runways and buckled infrastructure, snarling already strained global supply chains. Companies are acting because they need to act. They are setting goals. They are taking steps to assure their businesses survive and prosper. Some of them are acting because it's the right thing to do, but they're acting. And they're also acting because their employees, their customers, and their investors are demanding that they do so. Just look at two of the old company names that we know, Ford and General Motors who are literally phasing out gas-powered vehicles and spending billions of dollars on new factories 
factories in Michigan, in Tennessee, in Kentucky, factories that are making electric vehicles and batteries. Or think about some of the largest electricity providers, such as PSE&G and XL, who are replacing high pollutant coal plants, phasing them out, shutting them down, with utility-scale solar and offshore wind farms. And keep in mind, transportation and electricity are the country's two largest sources of carbon pollution. Shifting their business strategies and investments towards a net zero carbon future is a huge step in cutting our emissions in half by 2030. Still, our economic transformation is not happening fast enough, deep enough, or even broadly enough. It is about pace and scale. To achieve success across our entire economy, we need deeper resolve. We need to lean in and make this happen. But I think we can do it. I am a stubborn optimist, and I believe we can get there. History is choked. It's changing, though. It is right now chocked full of technological disruptions that transformed entire economies at jet speed. Personal computers changed all of us. Cell phones, the internet, heck, even automobiles are just a few examples. We are now at a disruptive tipping point on climate action, a transformational moment when rapidly declining clean technology costs and the global urgency to stop climate pollution are enabling EVs, renewable energy, and plant-based meats to overtake the older technologies that are causing global warming. And not only companies are acting, investors are bullish about the clean energy future. Hundreds of asset managers and asset owners that we work with even the biggest players like BlackRock and State Street and the largest public pension funds managing trillions of dollars, they are making commitments to moving the companies and their portfolios to be more climate aware and acting on climate and to investing in the clean energy transformation in our future. They're also joining us, companies and investors have joined us on Capitol Hill, knowing we need to advocate for policies that will open the doors and allow us to get to the climate protected future that we need to get to. And frankly, in days where people are seeing the negative, I will tell you that our elected officials at the state and at the national level are listening, they are passing laws and they're acting. Let me give you one example. The Inflation Reduction Act, passed in Washington a couple of months ago, signed by the president, was the single largest federal climate investment in US history. And it is the most powerful signal yet. $369 billion to support our transition to a clean energy economy. No longer a bunch of words or a hollow goal. We now have the tools, we have the support, we now can cut our emissions in half by 2030. And these new investments have already unleashed a wave of corporate climate commitments that are putting the United States back in the forefront of the clean energy community. All of us, all of us in our professional lives, in our personal lives, need to move, need to be climate leaders. We are seeing companies moving, tens of thousands of companies committing to a net zero future. It is our job to make sure that those goals are followed up with deeds, not just words. And we're seeing hundreds of global investors committing to a net zero future. Again, we need to move those investors and make sure they are about words and deeds, not words alone. And we need to keep turbocharging the policy process and make sure things are moving at every state in the United States Congress and globally. But all of us have a role as well. All of us in our professional lives, in our personal lives, need to be climate leaders. If you have retirement accounts, such as an IRA or a 401k, 
Look at your investments. Look for those opportunities to invest in funds, funds that are doing well and driving climate solutions. They are protecting the planet and we are not compromising our returns. Or if you own individual investments in companies where you get the form to vote as a shareholder, do your homework. There are more and more shareholder resolutions filed by the largest investors asking, telling companies to set zero emission goals, to come out with clear climate transition plans and to make them public and available to the public. And if you have a job, be a voice for change from within or from wherever you sit at that company. Or take a new job, as so many young people are trying to do, want to do, or moving to do, at a values-driven company with clearly stated climate goals. Look at what you buy. Look at your power, from food to cars to clothes. Do you support brands that are climate leaders? And if so, demand that they have specific climate transition plans and not just public goals. And if you are not invested in companies or buying from companies because they're not leaders, move them anyway, push them anyway, call for them to change absolutely everything they do. And most importantly, let's not let our policymakers off the hook. Yes, capital markets are one of the most intense and effective forces for turbocharging change. But let's make sure our policymakers are doing their job in turbocharging climate action. Hold your elected officials accountable for supporting the future, a future with clean air and clean water. That is not too much to ask. A future that you are proud of to pass on to your kids, not one that threatens their health and their economy. Remember, 80% of our emissions come from just 100 companies. We can change those companies. Capital markets are the most powerful force for change. We have to put that force to work today to save the planet, to enhance the economy, and to make sure my kids and your kids have a viable future. If there were a bus coming at our kids, we would jump in front of that bus and move our children out of the way. We have a bus coming at our kids. Now is the time to step up, to jump out, to make sure that we waste not one more minute, not one more day. Time matters, seven years is what we have. Talking about what we're gonna do next year is not okay. Talking about what we're gonna do today and tomorrow is the only thing that matters. It is how fast can we act and can we imagine and do we have the audacity to act at the pace and the scale that we need? It is up to every one of us. It is not left for policymakers in Washington, for the CEO of a company. Each and every one of us has the power in us to make the change. We can do it, it is doable, and together we will make it happen. Thank you.